Hello and welcome to our first mod review. So I thought about doing well few mods instead of just one mod. So we will be reviewing five mods, well five quality of life mods I know that everyone have used, but maybe for those who didn't come with them or didn't come I don't know, didn't meet them, we'll learn something new. Anyway, let's begin. Before we begin video, be sure to check out our host BerryBite, they are a very reputable and very good host, and let's begin. So the first mod we will be reviewing is called Apple Skin. So what does the Apple Skin mod do? It's a standalone mod providing the hood features previously included in Apple Core. I'm basically reading a mod description. Uh, long story short, what it does, it shows you the food value information on your tooltips. So I have few food set up here, so it's a pretty simple mod which should be included in vanilla Minecraft. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but this would help a lot of people. So basically, as you can see, it shows how much food it feels and how much saturation it feels. And why is this good? Because you know what do you need to eat to fulfill your hunger. So, you know, you don't overeat yourself. Like, as you can see, different foods have different values. And rabbit stew being the best right now we have here. And, for example, let's take, I don't know, let's take, let's take cooked chicken. And let's change our game mode to survival. Okay. And, as you can see, we are in survival, of course, obviously. So, let's run around a bit and, yeah, waste our hunger. And then you will see what I mean when you eat something. And I'm sorry if you hear that, but my cat is doing her litter box duties right now. Outside it's thundering and, you know, I'm a little bit of sick. So all the best combinations of things for you to record YouTube video. And I'll get back to you when I get a bit more hungrier. So I made this staircase for us to lose hunger faster by just simply damaging ourselves. So let's do that. And come on, okay. So as you can see, our saturation is gone. Now our hunger should go up, which should start using our chicken nuggets. Okay, it doesn't want to cooperate. Come on. Why are you not doing this? Maybe it's because I'm peaceful. Let me just change it quickly. So the downside is we're gonna have a lot of slimes on our tail in a second, but I guess we need to do it for the tests. Oh, okay. And as you can see, just one more. And we lost two chicken nuggets over our food hunger. And now, as you can see, if you are holding a chicken, it will show you how much it will fill up. So if we eat it, it will show you what it will do. So it filled up saturation bar and it filled our HP bar. So yeah, simple mod. I would recommend having it in any mod pack you create because it's simply amazing and not much else to say about it. So let's go on to the second mod. So our second Minecraft mod is called Better Achievements. Now what does it do? It's also a really simple mod. All it does is basically change the achievement screen, or advancement screen, they were called achievement before, I'm an old school player, so it changes the advancement screen to be a big, like you know, like a big GUI like this. And if you played, well, if you ever gone into advancement in normal Minecraft, it would be like smaller screen and you would need to drag and drop and, you know, you wouldn't see a lot, but with this screen you can see a lot more and it looks like, well, it looks better. So yeah, this mode scope is cosmetic and quality life. And that's all of, there is. So if you are into achievement hunting, and especially if you are into doing mod packs, you will find this mod in a lot of mod packs because as, as I said, it expands a lot on your, you know, on your visibility in advancements menu. But yeah, let's get to the another mod. The next plugin on our list is called mouse tweaks it is also quality of life mod and i used it before and i seen it also in many mod packs so let me just show you what it does okay so as you can see we have a few chests over here set up and for example in this chest we can click the sand and hold the 
left button and we will split the sand evenly with within the two slots for example as you can see or let me show you in the empty inventory so you can split it as you can see around the inventory and distribute it evenly if you want or you can just double click and it will collect all the sand in the chest or in your inventory as you can see or if you want to distribute it along those empty slots you can just hold shift and left mouse click and as you can see it will distribute the items evenly and you can do that with every item or you can just take for example this red sand and hold shift plus left mouse button and it will collect hold on okay okay that's not how it should be yeah it should collect the items but I don't know why it's not working for me but yeah that's how it should work but looks like it's splitting stuff up but yeah disregard that but as you can see it's a useful mod that lets you organize your inventory a lot faster for example if you're on some mod pack that you need to run into dungeon and loot stuff you can just do whoop and you just looted items and run away and it is a good combo with I don't know how the plugin is called but it the one that organizes your inventory so you can have you know like by lines vertical lines by name and so on and then the next thing this plugin does is lets you craft or distribute items in the crafting menu or any crafting menu evenly so for example i want to craft iron blocks and as you can see with 64 iron uh, ingots we can craft seven iron blocks and for example i don't know if you want to uncraft them you just do that of course but for example you want to make for some reason like as much helmets you want with the iron you have and with 64 we can make 12 helmets each or let's say chest plate we can make eight chest plates from that and so on so yeah for like let me see i don't know how the chains are created let me try and figure out the chain recipe or for example door recipe so if you want how many doors the create like yeah that's a lot of doors and let's create 30 doors and 36 iron nuggets but the principle is same for any item you can well craft with for example you want to turn those iron nuggets into the iron ingots and you can just drag and drop them and yeah craft stuff really fast and as you see I just hovered or I just shift left click and I just transfer my items well in the chest and the third thing this plugin does well this i don't understand for what use you can use it but you can as you can see scroll scroll wheel with the yeah, your mouse and it will transfer items to your inventory now i don't know what use case this has but i guess it's pretty interesting feature to have so yeah if you finding is useful this is a feature for you let's get on to the other mod the next mod is also quality of life improvement mod as i said we'll focus on this video and it's called enchantment descriptions so what this mod does well basically add a description to you know your enchanting books for example reduces damage from most sources as you can see protection 4 fire protection reduces the effects of fire damage also reduces the burn time when set on fire you see, I didn't know about that. Feather falling reduces fall damage and ender pearl teleportation damage. Okay, that's new because I knew it reduces fall damage, but I didn't know it reduces ender pearl teleportation damage. Soul speed increases movement speed on soul blocks, and as you can see, it just lists description of every enchant in the game. Now, why this mod is good? Because if you are adding a mod that have custom enchants, most likely is that they have a support for this mod so it will show up what the custom enchant does so yeah a pretty good mod if you want just to have descriptions on vanilla books or if you want to expand it on your modded enchants yeah let's get the last mod so the next mod is called waystones and this one has actually a crafting recipe as you can see i'm holding a big boy item in my hand so what this mod does is well basically lets you teleport around so let's say test one test one 
lets you teleport around your world in a kind of vanilla style way. So first of all, you will need two things to craft this bad boy. As you can see, you need warp stone, which is crafted for from four amethyst shards, four ender pearls, and one emerald. This is how you put it in crafting table. And then to get a waste stone, you need three bricks or three stone bricks one warp stone and three obsidian in this formation in crafting table and you will get waystone and upon placing it for example as you can see you can toggle visibility on activation or global and you can name it for example test 2 and test 2 whoops okay a bit of hiccup there don't mind that and for example if you want to teleport between those two you just click on them and you just teleport as you can see Nothing special. Now, some waystones require XP. If I'm wrong, that option is toggleable, but we will explore that in a moment. So, for example, I located a village right now, and you can get those waystones naturally from them too. So, let's just teleport to a village. And hello, Iron Golem villagers, and everything good around me. And each village should have a waystone, which this one looks like it doesn't have. But usually there's a place around it where, you know, you can find a waystone and either use it as to teleport to a village or between villages. Or, you know, just use it to steal it and place it at your base. So let's just create a normal world. And why is there a torch up here? Was there a torch always there? And let's see, why are there bats squeaking? I hear them. Okay, nice loot. But I don't see them. Hold on. Are they squeaking? Holy hell. How many bats spawned inside of there? That's like 10 bats at least. But yeah, let's go to normal world and try to locate a waitstone. And we are here in real world as you can see. And what do we get here? It's a waystone, and as you can see, it spawns naturally. Now, to activate it, you just, you know, click on it, and it activates waystone called Mrkird, whatever that is name. And as you can see, current location, it's called Mrkori whatever. And to rename it, you can just click on the book there and say, I don't know, my village. And yeah. And again, you can set the waystone visibility on activation or global. Global means that all players on server can see this waystone. So yeah, that's that. And for example, if we placed another waystone here and called it second waystone. And yeah, it's activated. And as you can see, between those two, we can just teleport freely because they're close. But let's try and find another waystone a bit further away. And here we are teleported to another village in Taiga this time. And as you can see, there is a waystone again. And we can just activate it and it's called Kuruiairurure, whatever. But as you can see now, because the waystone, well, my village is a free waystone, but Kuruiare, because it's a bit further away, requires a bit of experience. Well, now since I'm in creative, I can freely teleport, but it will te tell you right here how much experience you need. So, further away you are from your waypoint, the more XP you're gonna need to, well, teleport. So yeah. Now, if you are still early game and want to use waystones, you have two options. You can mine one and take it out with you, but that means you need to have a second waystone you can teleport to, or you can create a return scroll. As you can see, the recipe is simple and it's pretty early game like two gold nuggets one purple die and three paper and it creates let return scroll and the return scroll is bound to the last waypoint you use for example we used cruyare whatever this is and as you can see for example i want it to be bound to for example my village and i teleported to my village and the waystone now is bound to my village or, for example, I want it to be bound to second waystone. And as you can see, it's bound to second waystone. So, yeah, it remembers the last waystone you used. And just to use it, you just wind up. And voila, you teleport to waystone. It's actually, as I said, a good idea to have those scrolls. If you are going mining and, you know, you want to quick return to your base. 
or to your village or to wherever you placed your waste on. Uh, think of it like a Terraria recall potion. If you ever played Terraria, then you know what I'm talking about. So there are two more scrolls you can craft and to correct my mistake, so return scroll actually returns you to the closest waypoint it has activated and the bound scroll is what I mentioned before, which you can bind to, as you can see, for example, waystone. And then there's the warp scroll, but we'll get to that. So as you can see, the bounding of the, well, waste uh, bound scroll is pretty simple you just right click and it should be bound hold on moment please so apparently there is a trick in a new minecraft version where the bound scroll apparently works differently but in the most mod packs you are gonna play it you're just gonna right click it and it will bound to the waste stone you are looking at but in this case looks like there's some kind of special thing I need to do to bind this scroll, which I'm not sure how, so, you know, if you have any ideas, please let me know down in the comments, because you will help me learn something new, and you will help people learn something new. But let's get to the last scroll. Now, the last scroll, warp scroll, is actually the simplest one, well, it requires the most uh, amount of ingredients for the recipe, as you can see but it is pretty simple so what it does well you might have guessed it but if this teleports you to nearest uh waystone this teleports you to bound waystone which we didn't figure out how to do then this well warps you to any waystone you have discovered and you just wind it up and as you can see it shows you gui like for example if you access uh you know access the waystone and you can just select any of those guys for example my village and we teleported to my village and we want to teleport to come on let's find it up to second waystone and we teleported to second waystone so yeah a pretty straightforward it's not complicated at all and yeah that that now the next item on our list well this mod has more than just waystones it's called a portal stone or port stone and this stone can be teleported too and as you can see you need six stone bricks and warp warp stone to uh, craft it now what does this mean that means that you can teleport to other waystones but you can't teleport to this port stone so what is this good for well, it is good for, for example, if you're creating a dungeon for a player and you're using this mod and you want your player, for example, when they finish the dungeon to be able to teleport out of there to any of their waystones, but to not be able to return back to, well, the dungeon or to the end of the dungeon if they cleared it. So yeah, that's the port stone for you. Next item on our plate is called share stone. And what is this? It's basically uh, your own, own local, like, localized teleports. So as you can see, the recipe is three stone bricks, one warp stone and three obsidians. And for example, as you can see, we have few colors or a lot more colors. Same with waystone, as you can see, you can find many customized ones. And for example, white waystone, let's call it one. Okay, and let's call this two. And now, when we open it, as you can see, you only see those two wavestones. And for example, if you go orange 3, you don't see it because it's different colors. Same for light blue. Let's name it 4. And as you can see, we have blue, orange and white. And the white only, well, sees the white uh, share stones. The blue only sees blue share stones. The red or the orange actually sees only orange share stones, but they don't see wavestones. So it's good to, well, if you want to make your own localized networks and why is there a fire over there? Oh, it's lava pit, okay. Interesting, and there is a zombie in the horse pit. Amazing, the, getting distracted, 1-1. One, one. But yeah, those are the share stones. And they are not that hard to craft, well, they kind of are, but you know, not all of those things are early game because, for example, you need obsidian over here, which you need diamond pickaxe to get, or get lucky with uh, blacksmiths in villages, which depends on your luck. But as you can see, those are share stones. 
and they are interesting future if you want to make like a localized private network of your waystones. But be sure to know that those share stones have their name because you are gonna share them. So in local game, like in single player, you know, you are only one, so no one will see them. But in multiplayer, every guy that has, for example, a white share stone will see your share stones. They are like localized, they are separate from waste stones because on waste stones there are all, all waste stones listed, but share stones can only be accessed by players who ex, uh, especially created those share stones for those purposes. And as you can see, they can't be set. Uh, they can't be set to private or uh, global, so they are only global. So keep that in mind, because again, if you are playing single player, it's free for all. Like, you know, it's just you and you and no one else. But if you are a multiplayer, playing multiplayer, then anyone who can create blue share stone will see the blue, well, we'll see your blue share stone too, in their list. So if you want to keep private, you just plop down a waste stone and set it to not be a public. Yeah, I think that explains it well with my broken English. Now the last item on our list is called warp plate. So how do you craft a warp plate? You need warp dust, stone bricks and flint. Now we may be wondering how do you get warp dust? Well, it's pretty simple. Recipe is over here. So it's one ender pearl and one amethyst shard, and you get warp warp well, warp dust. And yeah, you used to craft it a warp plate. So you may be wondering how does the warp plate work? From which we, you know, picked up from there. So hello villager, you want to be a test subject? No, then goodbye. So as you can see, you place a war plate and you activate it, and it does this cool animation and it creates a tune shard. And yeah, you place another war plate, activate it, and as you can see, creates another attune shard. Now, what does this mean? As you can see, the text is blue and up here it's blue, so you can take it out. And you can take this green text and you can place the green text in blue one and the blue one in green text. And now that means that those two war plates are linked. And as you can see, when you stand on them, it teleports you to each other. Now you can do, or for example, you can make a one way plate. For example, you can take this out and this will teleport you to the blue plate but as you can see, since there is no attuned shard over here, nothing will happen. But if we place this shard back in, it will teleport and work again. So yeah, a pretty interesting future if you want to create war plates and yeah, have fun with them. So the war plates over here will also work cross dimensions. As you can see, we built this tall nether portal for some reason and I placed a war plate in the nether. And as you can see, it works cross dimension. And one more thing the warp plate can do is teleport mobs. So, for example, if you want to teleport a villager, let me just provide a suitable place to, you know, spawn him. And off he goes to nether. Hello, goodbye, hello, goodbye, hello. So, yeah, if you want for some reason to populate the nether with the villagers, now you can do that. And they don't even have to walk through a portal because they are dumb as hell. Eventually they'll just walk, you know, on the warp plate and go back home. Goodbye. And yeah, that's the mod. It's a pretty interesting mod and this guy got scared. And I think they all returned to another portal. Sometimes villagers are smart, sometimes they're dumb. But mostly they are dumb. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this first mod review. It's, you know, kind of a pilot idea because we're still testing stuff, still running stuff. And yeah, I hope you found something useful from this mod review. If you did, leave a like, share, subscribe, stay awesome, do what you do. Leave a comment how we can improve this serial and, you know, stuff like that. So we can go further and better and faster and whatever there goes. Anyways, stay awesome and see you guys on the next time. Bye!